Lisa Birdbrand, and today we are talking about the general interface. So what we're going to talk specifically about is how to kind of work with your camera view. So we're going to add a burn in to your scene. We're going to learn how to master that. We will also uh, see how to kind of use different kind of field guides and grids to make sure that your scene is perfectly aligned with whatever you need to align it with. Yes, it's going to be an easy tutorial, but I think a needed tutorial because I don't know if people don't know what the burn in is and they should. So I have this scene that I've been using lately and I just noticed that it's called I Will Bat You. I'm sorry, I made this scene as a joke and now I'm using it for tutorials, so sue me. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a burn-in. So what is a burn-in? A burn-in is something that burns in information on your slate, like on your seat. To get it, you press enter in your node view and you find burn-in, you get it in your scene. And this is an element node. So just like the other, it's light blue, it means that it can exist on its own. You know, it's not like an effect node that needs to be connected to something. It is an element node and it will produce images on its own. Ooh. And now if I connect it here, I have this writing thing that appears. If you want to learn how to customize it further, I strongly encourage that you check out the documentation on the subject. But um, yeah, I'm going to walk you through it as well. If you go to the little yellow box, you're going to get the properties of the burn-in. So first off, you can decide if you want to see the frame number or the time code because sometimes you want to see one or the other or both or none. Who knows? Maybe you just want to see the same name. I don't know. Um, I'm going to leave it to both. Uh, you can also decide the scene name. Now for the scene name, it's really interesting because you see here I have these little uh, logos like with percentage and all that. So what this does is it will allow you to quickly write like the scene name, the environment and the job of your scene. So for those of you who are maybe less familiar with production lingua, the environment usually it's the name of your project, such as um, Z Bird Brain <laughs> YouTube channel. And then the job is usually your episode, so episode one. And the scene would be the name of the scene. So when you work on a big pipeline, like a database environment, this is already written for you. Um, if you are not, uh, this might not be useful, so you can get rid of it if you want. And just keep uh, scene percentage and it will give you uh, the name of the scene in the render, uh, like I have right here. Du -du -du -du. So if I close, you're gonna see now I have just scene, new feature. If you wanna have more details on these uh, little codes, of course, like I said, it's all layered into the documentation. So it lets you display different types of information, including the scene name, environment, and job. Exactly what I just told you, okay? So just check it out if you don't remember, and uh, that's it. Of course, since it's a burn-in, you can also uh, use a frame offset. This is useful because sometimes if you work in a rig production, you're gonna have like the rig at the beginning of the scene. So if you don't want this to mess with your time code or something, you can just offset it by a few frames. And then here you have the fun part when you can customize your text. So I'm gonna go here and use my usual font, which is gorgeous. It's gonna, it's gonna work with this, with the font that you have on your computer. You can change the alignment the size of the lettering, even the color. <laughs> you can't animate it though. Oh, this is so unfortunate. <laughs> and then you can have a background box. This is useful, especially if you have a very colorful feature and you never see what your burning is. Um, you can have this and you can give it some alpha, which is very useful to not have it be too obvious in your scene. So that's how you customize your burning. After that, if you want to move it to someplace else, uh, what you can do is um, put it on a peg, just like everything in Harmony. If you feel fancy, you can even move your pivot point to there. Ooh, you can. And then you can uh, move it. The fun thing with this is that you can get the same burn-in and the same like peg information. And if you want, you can take both and copy paste them uh, in your library and just share them amongst your different scenes. If you don't know how to use the library, I have a tutorial on it, go check it out. Just don't forget to edit the frame offset back if you changed it, because not all scenes are gonna require the same. But then you can kind of keep the same look, the same position, the same, um, the same naming convention throughout your scene and it's pretty useful so you could just set it up once and then just slide it in from your library and the last thing i want to show today that are very useful to handle your scene is that you can use the uh, buttons right here at the bottom of your camera view to see what your scene is going to look like once it's rendered you know with the the framing you also have access to a grid so like the proportion grid it's going to show you the proportions um you can also have the safe area which is going to show you a safe area. If you have a very old version of Harmony, it might be a bit different. This is like the HD grid, but if you have, if you work in 3.4 or 4.3, uh, it might be a bit different. But you know, nowadays, most people work in HD, so it's fine. And you can also addition them and have them work uh, together. So this 
With the burn-in, it's gonna be very useful for your team. Last but not least, so once you render, yes, the burn-in will be seen, but these little grid indicator, once you render your final frame, like if you export, uh, you're not gonna see them, but you will see your burn-in if you export your PNG sequence. So don't forget to remove it before you export. <laughs> and with that, I'll wish you a very cool week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.